Hello guys, good day. Welcome to another video lecture in ACP 311, Accounting for Special Transactions. So in this video lecture, we will be discussing about corporate liquidation. So just like partnership, corporation could also lead into liquidation, wherein corporate operation will cease or will stop to operate. Now, due to possible company's mismanagement, it may suffer continued loss from operations, overextended credit to customer, poor management or working capital, failure to react to changes in economic decision, or inadequate financing, it may actually result into financial problems. So due to um, the mentioned mismanagement of the company, such will result into financial problems. And if the company could not provide solution in these financial problems, it may again result into insolvency of the entity. After it may result into insolvency, the entity or the corporation may result into bankruptcy or they could, um, uh, they could file for a bankruptcy in the Securities and Exchange Commission and therefore to be followed by a corporate liquidation. Now, however, take note that um, whenever there are corporate problems, it is not liquidation will only it is not the liquidation alone which is um, the possible solution for that problem. Because um, if there are corporate problems, the entity might act, might actually um, resort for um, debt restructuring or reorganization rather than corporate liquidation just to save the corporation. But again, our focus in this discussion is that after bankruptcy, what if the decision of the corporate board of directors is to liquidate the corporation? So we will be discussing in this video lecture the different procedures that we are to undertake when there is a corporate liquidation to happen. Okay, so when we talk about um, corporate liquidation, there are two important documents that we are to prepare as an accountant. First is the statement of affairs, and the second document is the statement of realization and liquidation. Now this time, under statement of affairs, your assets and liabilities will be grouped depending on its nature, which is different from the nature or depend, which is not the same on how we group our assets and liabilities based on um, the accounting standards. But this time, when the corporation is into liquidation, we will group our assets in our statement of affairs based on assets pledged to fully secured creditors or whether it is considered as assets pledged to partially secured creditors or whether it is considered as free assets. Now, when can we say that an asset is pledged to fully secured creditors? Now, asset is considered as assets pledged to fully secured creditors when it is actually um, being made as a collateral for full payment of a particular liability. So, for example, um, we have our inventories with a book value of 100,000, but it is only having a net realizable value of 75,000. So, if this inventory is being used as a collateral, as a collateral to our notes payable amounting to 50,000, so therefore, this inventory will be considered as assets pledged to fully secured creditors because it is um, used, it will be used in the future to settle in full amount the creditors, which is 50000 But take note, guys, that in preparing your statement of affairs, your historical cost will be irrelevant. So therefore, what we will be using in our statement of affairs will only will be your net realizable value. So therefore, um, any book value will be 
re will be irrelevant in the preparation of your statement of affairs in terms of corporate liquidation. So again, assets pledged to fully secured creditors are those assets used as collateral to pay in full amount those um, existing creditors of the entity. While assets par pledged to partially secured creditor from the term itself partially, these assets are used as a collateral to pay partial amount of our existing liabilities. So for example, we have a accounts receivable of 100,000 also, for example. We have accounts receivable of 100,000. But we are expecting that only 90,000 of it can be collected or will be realized. So therefore, we will be using 90,000 as the amount of our accounts receivable. Now here comes, let's say, it is collateralized for our accounts payable of 150,000. So since our liability is higher than the amount of our asset, then therefore, that accounts receivable will be considered as an asset pledged partially to our secured creditor because it only uh, secures partial payment of the entire amount of our liability. And then the third classification of our asset is our free assets. So obviously, from the term itself, free, it is called as free assets because it is not used, no? It is not used as a collateral to any creditors. So therefore, these free assets will be ready for distribution. Now, speaking of liabilities as well, your liabilities will no longer be um, designated as current liabilities and non-current liabilities just like how we prepare it in our financial statements. But rather, our liabilities here will be um, grouped based on this um, um, classification. First, we have unsecured liabilities with priority. Second, fully secured creditors, partially secured creditors, and unsecured creditors. So when we talk about unsecured liabilities with priority, guys, these are um, liabilities, although without security, but it is with priority. So when we talk about priority, meaning it has priority over the others. So therefore, even if we don't have security made for these liabilities, it is still given priority to be paid. So what are examples of unsecured liabilities with priority. So examples of these liabilities are our um, administrative na mga expenses, administrative expenses like salaries expense or salaries payable to our employees, or um, others are those liabilities we have to the government. For example, accrued taxes and so on. So if the entity or if a corporation during its liquidation process has these type of liabilities, then therefore, um, they will be given priority of payment over the others. The second type of liability, on the other hand, is our fully secured creditors. So needless to explain, from the term itself, fully secured, that means these liabilities are collateralized in full by our assets. So for example, um, earlier, we have an inventory of, um, let's say, with a net realizable value of 100,000, it is used as a collateral to our notes payable only worth 75,000. So therefore, ang ato ang notes payable ng 75,000 is fully secured since ang iyang collateral is 100,000 in net realizable value. So meaning, 100% um, of this credit will be paid if it is fully secured creditors. However, we also have partially secured creditors. So from the term itself, partially secured creditors or partial, meaning the credit is not 100% secured. For example, if the net realizable value of the asset used as a collateral for that specific liability is lower than the actual liability. So for example, we have an asset with a net realizable value of 100,000 used as a collateral for our notes payable worth 150,000. So again, if our net realizable value is 
lower than our actual liability, then therefore, there is, um, there is a difference. Meaning, not the entirety of your liability will be paid. So therefore, that liability will be considered as partially secured creditors because only portion of it is being paid or is being secured by a specific asset. The fourth liability, which is um, group in uh, our statement of affairs, is our unsecured creditor. So from the term itself, unsecured, meaning it is unsafe. That means it has no collateral at all. So unsecured creditors will only be paid if there are free assets from the entity. So, they cannot be given priority over these three types of creditors. Unsecured creditors will only wait for free assets. If there are free assets available upon liquidation of a, of a corporation, then these unsecured creditors will be receiving an amount. Okay, pero if obviously kung wala tayo free assets, then wala pa madawat ang ato ang mga unsecured creditors. Okay. Now, we have here um, sample two forma of our statement of affairs. When we talk about statement of affairs, it is normally prepared at the start of the liquidation. So, a, a statement of affairs is prepared for the corporation to provide information about the current financial position of the company. The Statement of Affairs is not a going concern report. It is an important planning report for the anticipated liquidation of a company. Thus, historical cost figures are not relevant as what I have mentioned earlier. The various parties concerned desire information that reflects, first, the net realizable value or the estimated realizable values, of our assets and the ultimate application of these proceeds to specific liabilities. So, these estimated realizable values of our assets will then be applied to our creditors. Take note, guys, as what I have mentioned earlier, that book values of our assets and our liabilities will be irrelevant when we are to prepare statement of affairs. So, when we prepare statement of affairs, this will be our pro forma. So we have the book values of our assets and liabilities on the left side. We have our particular assets and liabilities. And then they're followed by their respective estimated realizable values and um, application of these assets to specific liabilities. Now, let's use this illustration into an example. Or this pro forma, let's use this pro forma into an example. So let us say, here's... The Statement of Financial Position of No Fear Company. No Fear Company is on their way of liquidating their corporation. So they have a total assets of 389000 and total liabilities and stockholders' equity of 389000 as well. So even before the liquidation, actual liquidation of the corporation, the accountants of No Fear Company can or may prefer may prepare already the statement of affairs uh, statement of affairs to anticipate the actual liquidation of the company now before the preparation of a statement of affairs additional data must be ascertained concerning the insolvent company and its assets and liabilities hence the following information has been accumulated about the no fear company so if there are adjustments we need also to make um um, to address these adjustments. So in this case, we have eight. So we have marketable securities reported on the balance sheet, have appreciated in value since being acquired and is now worth 20000 with dividends of 500 currently due from this investment. Another 12000 of the company's accounts receivable can still be collected. So that means um, from our accounts receivable, only 12000 can already be collected. So as what I have mentioned earlier, that although um, we may have good figures of it as book value, but what matter is their realizable value. 
Number three, the inventory held by the company can be sold for 43000 A refund of 1000 will be received from the various prepaid expenses but the company's intangible assets have no longer resale value. So this is also important to note that if an entity is liquidating, if a corporation is liquidating, if the entity has prepaid expenses and intangible assets, we need also to make um, a very keen consideration for these two. For example, for our prepaid asset, let's say prepaid rent, um, let's say we are renting a specific space and then our rent paid is good for five years and then we only manage to um, we only manage to use four years pa lang out of that five years. So therefore, it depends on the agreement between the lessee and the lessor. Now, if the lessor will give us refund, then that's okay. That will be that refund or um, that, uh, again, refund from our lessor will be considered as part of our assets. But if um, that, if that difference, no, katong wala na to nagamit na prepaid rent will no longer be refunded by our lessor, then katong remaining na to nga prepaid rent nga wala pa na to nagamit will be considered already as loss. Okay? And second, ang ato ang mga intangible assets, our intangible assets will be assumed nga wala na resale value. So, regardless kung naapay book, va book value ang ato ang intangible asset, but it will always be assumed na zero ang ilahang resale value. So, automatic loss ang atong book value remaining for a specific intangible asset. Next, the land and building can still be sold for 231 while the equipment can only be sold for 32000 Administrative expenses of 21500 are estimated if liquidation of the company thus occur. Accrued expenses include salaries of 21 in payroll taxes from wages but not yet paid to the government, totaling 3000 Okay, this um, item number 7, guys, these are examples of our creditors without collateral but with priority. So these are our liabilities with priority. So they will be paid first over the other types of liabilities. And then lastly, number eight, interest of five thousand on the uh, interest of five thousand on the company's long-term liabilities has not been accrued for the six months of twenty twenty. Okay, to continue, here's the um, different notes, the, the uh, different important notes from. Um, the figures before that we need to consider in preparing for our statement of affairs. So again, current and non-current classification will no longer be applied in assets and liabilities. So again, our assets will now be grouped as fully secured, partially secured, and free. Or, sorry, our assets will now be grouped based on Asset pledge to fully secured creditors, assets pledged to partially secured creditors, and free assets. When our liabilities will now be grouped based on unsecured liabilities with priority, fully secured creditors, partially secured creditors, and unsecured creditors. And then letter B, again, reminder that book values will, will be irrelevant in preparing for our statement of affairs. But although it is irrelevant, it will still be reflected for um, for information purposes. It will be provided on the left side of the statement of affairs. And then, letter C, dividends and receivable and interest payable are both included in the statement. Okay? Although neither has been recorded on the balance sheet. So, currently updated figures must disclose we must be disclosed within the statement of affairs. So, for example, if we have... Um, accrued dividends payable or accrued um, accrued dividends nga wala pa na reflect dito as atong statement of financial position as of the beginning of our liquidation then we need to adjust them properly as well. And then letter D liabilities having priority are individually identified with the liability section. 
because these claims will be paid before other unsecured creditors. For example, 35000 is also deducted directly from the free assets. For example, if our total if our total um, liabilities without without um, security but with with priority, it has the first priority over our free assets. Take note. Our liability again, our liabilities without security but with priority will have the first priority sa ato ang free assets. So, for example, kung natay um, liabilities with priority nga 35,000, such 35,000 will be paid first out from our free assets. And then, although not yet incurred, estimated administrative expenses are included in this category since such expenses will be for liquidation. Also, um, additional note na it is also included as part of our liabilities with priority ang ato ang mga expected estimated administrative expenses. And then, letter E, according to this statement, if liquidation occurs, no fear company as our illustration expects to have only 57,000 in free assets remaining after settling all liabilities with priority. So unfortunately, the, the liability section shows unsecured claims with a total of 95,000. So that means, guys, that um, it is um, it is impossible for our unsecured na mga creditors to be paid in full. So therefore, we will be computing an expected recovery percentage. So this expected recovery percentage is the percentage or the portion of the unsecured liability that the corporation may only be paying sa ito ang mga unsecured nga mga creditors. So to compute for our ERR or expected recovery percentage, so we have our net free assets of 57,000. So as a gikan ang net free assets, net free assets, this is the total free assets minus our liabilities with priority. So, for example, our net free assets is 57,000 and then our unsecured na liabilities will be 95,000. So, for example, take note guys that this unsecured credit here includes two um, breakdowns. First is katong fully unsecured good ng mga liabilities and then second is katong portion sa partially secured ng mga liabilities. So, for example, 75% lang ang, ang, ang collateral sa ibuhang partially secured na liability. So, therefore, na 25% nga unsecured. So, appeal to the RIA ah, ang balance sa wala na paid in full sa atong partially secured creditors. The RIA sa atong unsecured na mga liabilities. So, therefore, if these are our figures, our expected recovery percentage will be 60%. So therefore, if unsecured creditors or unsecured creditors can anticipate only receiving 60% of their claims. Unsecured creditors, for example, let us say meron siyang liability of 1,000 or meron siyang receivable from that corporation of 1,000 and then siya is considered as unsecured creditor, then that creditor will only be receiving 600,000. So, from 1,000 times 60%. So, again, this expected recovery percentage is very important because this is most common in answering problems. So, in problems in corporate liquidation, the most common na mga problem or mga issues that will be asked is the total amount to be recovered to be recovered by a specific creditor okay so please take note of that so for example okay for example we have here our statement of recovery so we have our different classes of creditors their respective claims and the computation of um, the expected cash nga ilahang ma dawat so let us say we have unsecured but with priority 
So as what I have mentioned earlier, that these unsecured with priority will really be expected to be paid in full. So automatic na ang tanan mga unsecured with priority will be paid in full. Also, we have our fully secured. From the term itself, full secured, automatic also nga 100% put na ang ilahang ma dawat. So 205,000 ilang claim and then they can expect na makadawat put sila og 205,000. Now, diri a kay partial. So, diri kay partially secured na mga creditors. It's a combination of two. It's a, a partly safe and partly unsafe. Partly safe kay portion of it is secured, pero unsafe because portion of it is um, unsecured. So, therefore, let us say, ang ihang total claims is 75,000, but it is um, only secured with an asset with a net realizable value of 43,000. So therefore, that 43,000 na collateral will really be expected to be given for that creditor. But the problem here is how about the remaining? So meron tayong total claims na 75,000 and then meron tayong collateral only or security for only 43,000. So therefore, meron tayong unsecured portion nga 32,000. Okay, for that 32,000 guys, that 32,000 will only be receiving 60%. Since that 32,000, as what I've said earlier, this will be forming part of your total unsecured liabilities. So therefore, this 32,000 will be sharing only 60% or will only be receiving 60% as computed expected recovery rate earlier. So therefore, si partially... Um, secured creditor with a total claim of 75,000 with, with security of 43,000 can only expect to receive cash amounting to 62,000 with expected recovery rate of 60%. And then, lastly, your unsecured without priority, you, you just simply multiply it, ang total claims nila with your respective um, recovery rate of 60%. So therefore, ang estimated recovery na to will be 37,000. So if you have noticed, guys, that our total liabilities is higher than our expected or estimated recovery. So this will result into an estate deficit later on. Kaya mas dako man ang atong liabilities over our, our um, expected realization of our assets. Now, let us try to prepare statement of affairs from the figures that we have mentioned earlier. So again, in preparing for your statement of affairs, you have here book values, your particulars, particular assets or liabilities, the respective estimated realizable value, and there, um, um, whether these assets are used as security for a specific liability. So for example, we have here, our assets are grouped into three Pledge with fully secured creditors, pledge with partially secured creditors, and then our free assets. Okay? So, let's start with our asset na pledge with fully secured creditors. So, we have land and building. Okay? We have land and building of 231,000. We have book value of 210, but our net realizable value is 231. Okay, mas dako ang ato ang estimated realizable value. And again, and again, our um, estimated realizable value will be used instead of value. It is considered as pledge to fully secured creditors because it is used as a collateral sa ato ang liabilities na 205,000. If you have noticed, our asset is higher than our liability. Our security is higher than our liability. That is why it is considered as um, asset pledge with fully secured creditor. So from that, 231 minus 205, we still have a free asset of 26,000, which will be um, available for our unsecured creditors later on. Okay? Now, next, let's proceed with our um, assets pledge with partially secured creditors. Okay? Our assets with partially secured creditors. So in this case, the inventory nato is considered as pledged with partially partially secured creditors because um, its its amount or its net realizable value is lower than 
the amount of the liability where it is used as collateral. So, si inventory diria is used as a collateral sa notes payable. Ang atong notes payable is 75,000. Kunya, ang iyahang net realizable value is only 43. So, obviously, we don't have free asset for this um, type of asset. No? Wala siya contribution para sa ato ang free assets. And then, lastly, na atay mga free assets or katong mga assets na to, na not used as collateral sa ato ang mga liabilities. So you have cash, marketable securities, dividends receivable, accounts receivable, prepaid expenses. So take note guys, as mentioned earlier, if the problem is silent as to any refund for these prepaid expenses, kung silent siya, we really assume that our prepaid expenses will be considered as a loss or will be zeroed out. Okay? But in this case, in this specific problem, it has iterated man that there is a refund of 1,000 for prepaid expenses. So that is why we have 1,000 diraa. And then we also have our equipment of 32,000 nga estimated realizable value. And lastly, our intangible assets. Look, we have book value of 15,000 for our intangible asset, but it has expected always nga zero ang iyahang estimated realizable value. So therefore, all of these will contribute to our total um, free assets. So we have total free assets of 67,500 plus the 26,000 earlier. So naatay net a total free assets of 93,500. So this 93,500 will be distributed to our unsecured na mga creditors. But again, from our unsecured creditors, our creditors with priority will be receiving first. So, hatagan nato sila o una. They will be receiving first. 36,500. So, in short, na na lang tay, total net free assets karon nga, 57,000. So, kanis si 57,000, mauni siya tong um, numerator kaganina sa ato ang pag-compute sa total expected recovery rate. So, 57,000. Or free assets over unsecured creditors. So, we have 57,000. And then, so, so 57,000. And then, we have here estimated deficiency. So, asagi ka ng ato ang estimated deficiency. So, our estimated deficiency is squeezed out, no? Squeezed out. This 95,000 is, uh, again, sorry, this 38,000 is squeezed out from 95. So later on, asa man nato ang 95,000, this 95,000 is from our total unsecured non-priority liabilities later on. So, okay, let's proceed muna kay liabilities. So again, kay liabilities, same with our assets, it will be grouped depending on their classification. So first, we have our liabilities with priority. So we have here administrative expenses, salaries payable, and our payroll taxes. So we have a total of 36,500. So kaning 36,500 guys, mo na siya ang kani dara um liabilities nato with priority si 36,500. And then we have so obviously kung ano sila secured claim sila, then wala wala yung portion of them nga Unsecured. So, zero ang unsecured for that type of liability. And then, second, we have fully secured creditors. So, fully secured again. Nga nung fully secured, gani ni siya? Because this type of liability is secured man with our um, land and building. Kani siya. ba? As you have um, noticed earlier. So, ang ato ang net realizable value is 231. Pero ang amount lang sa atong liability is 205. So, therefore, all of it or the entirety of it is to be paid. So, wala po siya, wala po siya contribution sa unsecured, non-priority liabilities. And then, naatay third type of liability na to, nga partially secured creditors. Partially secured, kay portion lang ang, ang covered sa iyahang um, collateral. So, ang iyahang liability is 75,000, pero ang net realizable value lang of its um, collateral is only 43,000. So therefore, there's 32,000 na 
unsecured portion of it of it of this liability. And obviously, this entire sixty three thousand will be considered as unsecured non priority liabilities. So our total non secured unsecured non priority liabilities is ninety five thousand. But again, balikan nato ang atong assets earlier. We have total liabilities nga unsecured of 95,000 but we only have net free assets of 57,000. So 57,000 lang ang ato ang net free assets. So therefore, 95 ng atong liabs and then our available assets cash nga 57,000 only. So natay deficit nga 38,000. So mo na siya ang pagcompute sa ato ang estimated deficiency. So ato ang total um, unsecured liabilities without priority compared it with your free assets. Okay? So that is the preparation of our statement of affairs. Now, this time, guys, um, in the process of liquidating a, part, a corporation, we could actually have this accounting and, I mean, the trusteeship Okay, so trusteeship. So the concept of trusteeship is that there is someone who will administer the entire liquidation process. So therefore, that someone or that administrator will be absorbing all the assets and liabilities of the corporation or will be recording the assets and liabilities of the corporation to its books. Okay, so... Sa iya ha, i-record ni ang assets, liabilities, and um, estate equity. So, instead instead of shareholders' equity, si administrator will use estate equity account as its equity account. Okay? So, normally, the trustee opens a new set of accounting records. The assets and liabilities of the debtor corporation are recorded in the trustee's books at book value rather than at their net realizable value. Contra-asset accounts are omitted because they are not necessary in liquidation. These accounting procedures are used to keep the trustees' accounting records as a simple uh, as simple as possible. So again, the re sa trusteeship or um, accounting and reporting for trustee or receiver, all of the assets and liabilities naman will be recorded back at book value. And all the contra-assets Contra asset accounts will be neglected. Okay? In the preparation of your ano, um, trustee or receiver na accounting. So, for example, assume that Manuel Valdez, the trustee in the liquidation of, of No Fear Company, took custody of assets of No Fear Company on June 30, 2013. So the following entry should be prepared to open the trustees' books. So, okay. So, um, upon liquidation, if, example, in this case, si Manuel Valdez the ang iyahang um, you choose or the board of directors chose Manuel Valdez as the administrator in liquidating No Fear Corporation. So again, Manuel Valdez will be recording in its trustee book or in its account, in its book of accounts, all of the assets and liabilities of the corporation on book value. So again, this is based on the statement of financial position presented earlier. But this time, instead of shareholders' equity, the um, residual value will be recorded as estate equity. Okay? So the figures here is from the statement of financial position mentioned or presented earlier in um, in No Fear Company. So this time, we have here the transactions and events during the first month of No Fear Company's trusteeship and the related journal entries to record them in the trustees' books are illustrated in this um, um What's this? In this slide. Now, okay, take note, guys. Um, we have already prepared statement of realization. Statement of realization is being prepared even before the start of liquidation. Now, this time, we already started the liquidation. So, this time, 
the accounting for realization and liquidation or actual liquidation of the corporation will now start. And that will be um, spearheaded by the administrator. So whoever is the administrator will be the one nga magmanage sa tanan mga realization of assets, sa tanan payment of liabilities with our respective na mga creditors. So for example, we have here, number one, the accounting records shown in illustration 1-2 as mentioned earlier are adjusted to correct balances as of June 30. Hence, the dividends receivable and interest payable are recognized. So di ba, kaganina, um, when the statement of statement of financial position of no fear company was presented, um, wala na appeal did to ang interest payable and ang dividends receivable. So from that, before mag start ang liquidation process sa corporation, ato sa siyang i um, i adjust or i record sa nato siya. So we have here debit to dividends receivable for five hundred and then credit for our interest payable. Na five thousand. So therefore, there is a there is a decrease ng effects at to ang estate equity for four thousand five hundred. Second, the trustee expends seven thousand to sell the inventory at price of fifty one thousand. So the cash is applied to the notes payable for which the inventory had served as partial security. So this one, we have a total proceeds of 40, 44,000 from our inventory of 41,000. So that's from 51 minus 7. So we have 44,000 total cash proceeds. However, the net realizable value or the book value only of our inventory is 41,000. So therefore, we have a gain on sale na 3,000 for our sale of inventory. So in that case, that will increase our estate equity for 3,000. And take note, guys, that this inventory DAO is um, a collateral for our notes payable. So therefore, this will be um, the entire proceeds from this realization of our inventory will be paid in full for our notes payable for the entirety of 44,000. So again, guys, in this case, um, our inventory were not given to our creditors, but rather it is the administrator who realizes it, who converted it into cash, and then used the cash to pay the creditors. It is not giving the actual inventory to our creditors. Okay, so we have here number three collection is made of the 5,500 cash dividend accrued as of June 30, and the related investments relate, reported. At 15,000 and are then sold for 19,600. Okay, so we have here another marketable securities. So, natay book value ng marketable securities of 15,000. So, gibaligya daw siya. So, that is why atong gi credit. And then, ang atong dividends receivable gi collecta naman daw nato. So, that is why naka credit ta deraa. Kay kaganina gi debit man natong dividends receivable. So, nakolekta naman nato sa so ato ang gi credit. So, pilatanan ang credit nato. So, we have ang marketable securities was sold for 19.6. Okay? Natay 19.6. Pero ang ano niya, ang, ang book value is only 15,000. So, therefore, natay 4,600 na gain on sales sa ato marketable securities. 4,600. So, that is why na ata deray Credit to estate equity nga 4,600. And then debit to cash nga 20,100. So that 20,100 20, is from 19,600 nga proceeds sa itong marketable securities plus 500 nga cash dividend nga gikolekta na to. Okay, number four. Accounts receivable of 16 are collected. So the remaining balance is written off as bad debts. Okay. Um, accounts receivable. Okay. So, this is, I suppose this is not accounts payable, but accounts receivable. Take note. So, um, there's a bit of error here. Instead of accounts payable, it should be accounts receivable of 23,000. We have a book value of 23,000 nga accounts receivable. Um, if you will refer it sa inyuhang statement of position, na atay accounts receivable dira a nga 23,000. Pero, ang nakolekta lang was 16. So therefore, 
the 7,000 is considered as uncollectable. And since it's uncollectable, dili na, dili na po di mo siya i-recognize as allowance for bad debts because the entity is liquidating na, will end na its operation. So therefore, automatic it will go as a deduction to your estate equity. So that is why na debit ang atuang estate equity for, the, for this item. And then number five, the trustee determines that no refund is available from any of the company's prepaid expenses. So the intangible assets also removed from the accounting records because they have no cash value. So diri a atong i address ang ato ang prepaid expenses o ang ato ang intangible asset. Now our prepaid expenses will only have one thousand nga proceeds. So therefore. Um, 3,000 minus 1,000, so natay um, loss nga 2,000, okay? Natay loss nga 2,000 na daan. So, ato mang i-close na ang prepaid expenses, so ato ang i-ano na, itanggalo na nato, i-credit na nato si prepaid expenses, so credit na 3,000 na daan. So, take note nga, from that prepaid expenses, nagka-loss na tadaan og 2,000. And then, we have here our intangible assets. Our intangible assets is with book value of 15,000. and Again and again, basta intangible assets, it will have a resale value of zero. So therefore, this 15,000 will be considered as immediate loss. Okay? So, we have here 3,000 na prepaid expenses plus your intangible assets of uh, 15,000, you will have your estate equity uh, debit of 18,000. Ah, sorry. Wala dahi, no? The trustee determines that no refund is available daw from any of from any of the company's prepaid expenses. So, wala dahi to 1,000. So, ang um, tibuok na prepaid expenses niya 3,000 ang ato ang i-consider as loss. So that is why 18 na dira ah. Kay no refund man daw. No refund will be given para sa prepaid expenses. So that's why we have a total estate equity debit of 18 ah, 18,000 for that item. Okay, next number 6, the land and building are sold for 208 with 205 of this money was used to pay off the secured creditors. So again, as mentioned kaganina sa atong statement of realization, or I mean statement of affairs, nga si ato ang land and building is a as an asset fully um, used as collateral sa ato ang um, liabilities. So therefore, portion of it, no, 205,000 of it will be paid sa ato ang liabilities nga nakalink na, na asset. So again, we have land and building na atay total book value of 220 but we only managed to sell it at 208. So therefore, na atay loss nga 2,000. So that loss will be recorded sa ato ang estate equity. And right after the receipt of cash, ibayad na to siya directly sa ato ang mga creditor. So debit, notes, and interest payable to close our liability account and credit cash for 205,000. So just like our inventories kaganina, we did not give the inventory, actual inventory to our creditors. We settle, we realize first land and building, convert it into cash, and use that cash to settle our liabilities. And then seven, the equipment is sold for 42,000 cash. So how much is the book value of our equipment? So the equipment is with book value of 80. So therefore, Naatay loss nga 38 kay na, rel, na, na realize lang nato siya for 42,000. So we have total estate equity debit balance of 38,000 for that item for the loss on sale of equipment. And then number 8, various administrative expenses of 24,900 are paid. So again, that administrative expenses will be charged to your estate equity account. So from that, we can now prepare our um, summary of cash receipts and distribution. So cash receipts from all assets or from all cash received throughout the realization of our assets. Okay, From 
um, beginning balance nga 2,000 up to ending balance nga 58,000. Uh, sorry, pila na siya? For a while, ha? From, uh, from 2,000 to 330. 2,100. And then, atay, um, total cash distribution made, oh, I mean, sorry, natay total receipts, guys, nga uh, 232. Sorry, balikan na ako. For a while. Sa maning naong ako, eh. Okay, so that's total cash receipts of 332,100 and then total cash distribution na to sa atong mga creditors and administrative expenses o totaling 237,000. So therefore, as of July 31, natay ending cash balance nga 58,200. So that's our statement of cash receipts and distribution. So we could also um, convert that T account into a formal statement of cash receipts and disbursement. So, nata diri ay cash balance for 2000 All of our cash receipts from kadtong mga debit to cash kaganina sa inyong mga sa mga journal entry from items 1 to item 8. Lahat ng mga debit to cash di 2A will be recorded here. So, that is why we have total cash of 330 100 and then less lahat ng mga nakakredit na cash due to payment to our liabilities secured partially secured and our administrative expenses so we have a total um cre credit to cash of 273900 so therefore at the end of July July or on July 31 2020 we have a cash balance of 58200 okay now, this time, let's prepare statement of estate deficit. So, yung deficit na to, pila ang ato ang deficit. Let's account for our deficit. So, we can now compute for our um, deficit this time. So, here, our deficit. So, we have a total deficit of 50,800. Fifty thousand eight hundred. So, we have, ano ha, this is actual deficit na. This is actual deficit. Katong deficit ninyo dito as a statement of affairs, guys, na ato ang gi account kaganina at the beginning of our video lecture, that is still estimated deficiency. Kay statement of affairs man to, wala pa man tay actual nga liquidation nga nahitabo dito ah. But this time since liquidation process has um has coming to an end na na compute na pud nato ang actual deficit on July 31, 2020. So again, we have here on the computation of our total deficit nga 50,800 so that's from our estate equity on July 1, 2020 kadtong gikan dito asa um pag entry sa books ni trustee katong first ni mga entry tong pagdawat ni ni trustee sa lahat ng assets and liabilities so naata dito ay total estate equity of 36,000 and then adjusted for dividends in interest Diba, nagka-loss man tayo ng 4,500 adjustment. Kaya na daw tayo interest payable na 4,500. Ah, 5,000 nga wala na record and then na dividends receivable nga wala pa na kolekta. So, net effect niya is um, um, deduction to our estate equity of 4,500. So, therefore, we have an adjusted balance of 31,500 on July 1, 2020 for our estate equity. And then, we have here the net gain or loss on realization. Kadong mga naka-debit to net equity o credit to, uh, I mean, debit to dif, uh, debit to estate account and credit to estate account kaganina from journal entries number 1 to number 8. 
if you have noticed lahat ng gain and loss nato ato ang gi record directly sa ato ang um, estate account so katung mga nakadebit nga estate account or estate equity that will constitute loss and lahat ng nakakredit is constituting gain so therefore we have a total ano total loss of 82,300 including na ang administrative expenses of 24,900 so if you were if you will compare ang atong positive balance lang sa estate equity nato is 31,500 but we had a total loss on realization including administrative expenses of 82,300 so therefore at the end of the liquidation we recognize 50,800 na estate deficit actual estate deficit so to update the um, statement of financial position this time on the books of the trustee no no fear company in trusteeship on the books of the trustee after the liquidation has happened after the realization of non-cash assets has happened after the payment of liabilities towards your fully secured and partially secured has happened it has now come to these balances so we have cash of 58200 and then total estate total liabilities and estate of 58200 also so natay total uh, liabilities of 109000 plus our estate deficit nga 50800 so 109 minus 50800 so our total liabilities and estate deficit is 58,200, which is equal to our liabilities of 58,200. Okay? So, pa, sa pag-distribute ka ron, sa ato ang remaining cash ng 58,200, mo na ni siya ka ron ang bahin-bahin nun aning nabilin ng mga creditors. Mga unsecured ng mga creditors. Okay, so this time, we have the statement of actual realization and liquidation. So, actual na to na mga realization and liquidation. So, we have here the asset, liabilities, and then income or loss. Okay, so this time, we have here assets to be realized. All of your assets no, in their book value. All assets actually realized na kung kung diri a book value diri a kung pila ang na realize for that asset for example marketable securities is with book value of 15000 but it was um managed to be realized at 19600 so mo na ang assets realized diri a pod atong assets acquired new katong wala pa na appeal sa um, wala pa na appeal sa statement of financial position right before the start of liquidation. So in this case, meron tayong dividends receivable nga 500. And then all of our assets were realized. So none ang ibutang nato na sa non assets not realized. Same with our liabilities. So liabilities liquidated. Uh, di here na dire apod nga side ang liabilities liquidated. Opposite siya ni assets realized kay dire man sa credit side ang assets realized. Dari apod sa liabilities, nasa debit side ang liabilities liquidated. Katong actual nga mga liabilities nga ito ang nabayaran. And then, ang liabilities to be liquidated, these are all liabilities in their respective book values. Okay? And then, ito, this one we have liabilities incurred new. Itong bago daw na nga na, na 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 incur na liabilities so kaning 5000 kauba na ni dividends receivable katong wala na to na recognize na interest payable and then there are um those liabilities not liquidated not yet liquidated so mo ni siya katong nabilin sa statement of financial position ni trusteeship na wala pa na bayaran so mo ni siya notes payable accounts payable and uh, expenses and then we also have here katong administrative expenses guys and the net loss. So, there are expenses and then revenues or loss. So, in this case, loss man. So, this is loss. 
and this is expenses of 24900 okay so if you have noticed na balance na sila 770 400 and 770,400 statement of actual statement of realization and liquidation okay so lastly is to close the books of the trustee na to close the books of the trustee so the total remaining liabilities of 109,000 all unsecured creditors receive 0.5340 on the peso. So that means ang expected recovery rate nila is 53.40% ang expected recovery rate. So every peso daw mabayaran lang og 0 0.5340. So to close that, so we have mo na to ang 58,200 baya mo lang ang gamiton nga pambayad to settle all the liability accounts. So we have here three liability accounts. For example, 31,000, pero makadawat na lang siya 16,550. Okay? To close our liability accounts. And then, how about katong ano, guys? Katong wala pa nabayaran. Katong wala pa nabayaran, katong balance, ani, for example, 31,000 ang notes payable. Diba? Pero ang nabayad is only 16,550. So, the remaining balances sa ato ang mga liabilities will be used to close our estate deficit para maklose na po to ato ang estate deficit. So, debit na dari 14,450. So, kanong 14,450 difference na ni 31,000 o ni 16,550 and so on and so forth for accounts payable and accrued expenses. So, at this time, we don't we no longer have liabilities and we no longer have um, estate deficit account because all of them were closed. And that means the liquidation of the corporation has now ended. No? So, very unfortunate for our unsecured na mga creditors because they will only be um, receiving less than an amount. Less than an amount of their actual nga claims to the corporation. So, if you have any more questions, so feel free to ask just um, reach me on my on our group chats. So our sources for this discussion and possible um, supplemental readings can be based on their ref on, on these references. Okay, so I have here our I know guys bonus question for you to have a chance of winning a prepaid load. So, I will be giving 30 pesos prepaid load for the ones. A chance ha, a chance lang. Because not all of you who will give me the correct answer ang makareceive ng 30 pesos prepaid load. Only um, the ones na randomly chosen ni pick a name. So, compute. Assume the assets are converted to cash at their estimated current values. What amount of cash will be available to pay unsecured priority claims? So, if you know the correct answer, if you can compete the correct answer based on our discussion earlier, you can comment down below. And then, if you are correct, you will get a chance to win a prepaid load. So, I think that's it for our video lecture this day. See you and be safe. Goodbye.